Hey everyone, welcome back to Automation. So today I was actually going to make the heaviest car possible in Automation, but in thinking about that, I was thinking about six by sixes, and then I was like, well, why don't we make one of those? So I've chosen myself a victim, i.e. this truck right here. You might recognize this body as being the one that really dominated the uh, previous showcase, the Baja showcase 2023. Um, it is a 1995 body, actually it's earlier than that, it's a 1985 body, wow, but it is a really cool small truck, and I think it'll look cool as a 6x6, so let's get into this. Before we do, I just want to say I'm still selling stickers on my store, and if you're interested, the orders are still being doubled until I run out of them, and then when I run out, I don't know if they're ever going to be back. So this might be the last time that they're available. I think I have 60-something left, but keep in mind double orders. That's only like 30 orders. I honestly don't expect them to last the rest of the month, so yeah. Shipping is included in the price all over the world. Check them out on my website, automotiveflux.com. And if you're enjoying this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel and like this video as well. Comment below if you have any suggestions along the way. Last time I asked for that and there were like 400 extra people that joined up, uh, apparently it works. <laughs> I'll start doing it, I guess, if it's a good reminder. Okay, what I'm going to do for this truck is we'll make it slightly realistic, but at the same time it's a 6x6, so I don't really know what else to say. And before we go too far, you can't actually make 6x6 uh, vehicles. It's going to be like a fake 6x6, visual only. I'm going to go double wishbone in the front and uh, let's do coils in the back so it'll have a solid rear axle and an independent front suspension setup. Uh, the solid rear, ax rear axle is important because I'm hoping to be able to fit something else in back there. <laughs> so engine, I didn't really think about this. Um, let's just do a, a 5 liter V8 something cast. Doesn't have to be fancy, literally just an engine. Let's do push rods. It's going to be a 5.2 liter V8 with cast all components. Um, hmm, billet steel maybe, and then cast. We'll see what's actually necessary. Doesn't need VVT or anything like that, no turbos, uh, just direct injection. A twin maybe? <laughs> I don't know. That's a little aggressive. There we go, that's exactly what I wanted. After a quick tune, that is a very adequate 312.6 horsepower. I'm fine with that, uh, it doesn't need to have more. It's a very understressed, decently powerful engine, and it should be good enough. Okay, so this is where things get fun. Now this body has a lot of options, including a convertible-esque version, or one with a, a top on it. I think I'm gonna go for the three-quarter cab, um, just because I like that look. It doesn't really mesh well with the rest of the body, but I think it'll look cool for this. Um, you can see a different example like that just doesn't look right, <laughs> but uh, I mean, this whole thing isn't going to look right as I do it. So can we extend the bed length? Turns out the answer to that is no. Alright, skipping through everything, it's important that we establish what I mean when I say that I'm making a 6x6. Um, let's make this four-wheel drive, by the way, but going back to here, the advanced fixtures is where it's at. We're going to have to move the wheels around a little bit, specifically at the back. So down here in the body section where it says may break fixtures, we can move the wheels forwards and backwards and make space for more, basically. I had a debate with myself earlier as I was thinking about this idea on whether or not it's best to have the wheels be, uh, like the real wheels be at the back or be at the front. And I think at the back is better just because the wheelbase will be longer, for real. Um, let's not do 750, but maybe 75. Actually, that might be too much. I don't want the tray to be that long. So yeah, we are going to have to do a custom bed for this, otherwise it's just not going to work. Um, which also involves cutting the bed off of this, if I can do that. Easily, at least. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no utility variant of this truck. It probably would have been easier to do this on a truck without a bed to begin with. Alright, so we have these wheels here, which means I'm going to have to make the other wheels approximately the same size in order for this whole... Uh, charade to actually fly, but basically this is what we're going for, although a little bit nicer and more fleshed out, essentially. Something like that. Yeah, <laughs> except if you're noticing, this is particularly close to the inside of there, so I'm gonna have to go further back, maybe here-ish, 
and then I'll move that accordingly. So something that's good about automation in general is that there are a ton of mod pieces that we can use to sort of fill in the gaps of this. And that's sort of why I was confident enough to try it. Although I have seen this done well by members of our Discord community. But basically you can just grab a like big box piece like this, although likely one with a bit of side to it. These ones are definitely not set up for what I'm doing. Uh, which is unfortunate, but I should be able to kind of fake it in with one of these, or maybe this, and then fill in the gaps with something else. Um, <laughs> we need some sort of dually over fenders as well. Alternatively, I might just have to just uh, make it so the chassis is hidden, because otherwise it's going to stick out really far, and that's just not ideal. Yeah, no, this is definitely still an experiment. We're not quite in the uh, production stage yet. Okay, so this is what I've come up with so far. It's, uh, yeah, just ignore the giant tray hanging out the back. I can hide that, and basically what happens is you can see there's all the floorboards and stuff in the body. Uh, we just go to visibility, hide chassis, and that disappears. And then that whole piece goes away, which is unfortunate because I kind of wanted the underneath side of things, but... If that's how it has to be, then that's how it has to be in order to make this a full-on 6x6. One of the challenges is to try and actually get like a rim in there, and I need to find a rim that matches that rim in order for it to sort of work nicely. Um, so what I'm going to do is probably just steal something out of here, and then we'll go for some old-school 40s-style rims, because that seems to be the only thing that's actually going to work here. Now this is getting weird. So the car has, or truck I should say, has a roll cage on the inside, and now it has a roll cage on the outside as well. Sorry, I'm used to civil 3D controls here. I'm <laughs> a little bit too into my work these days. But yeah, now we have a cage, and uh, I think it's time that I actually like did some design on this. Probably told you what I'm thinking. So I'm gonna try to recreate a little bit of a Baja-esque vehicle. I kind of want this to look like the, uh, I think it's the Hennessy Raptor uh, with the ridiculous 6x6 thing. That's sort of what I'm going for. No telling what it's going to actually turn into, but I'm going to try my best here to make something interesting for you. That's the goal. Oh yeah, so the wheels that I went with are these. I haven't actually gone to try and pick something out that's similar yet. These are wagon wheels. They're actually supposed to be made out of wood. Um, <laughs> this is getting weirder by the second, I know, but it, it is a lot of fun, and I guess that's kind of kind of the point. Okay, so time has passed, and I have created this. Uh, let me go through some things that have changed. So the front end is sort of a, it looks like a Yugo, which is my version of the Yugo. The same thing that's on the stickers, these are the same lights that I used right here, except this time with a little bit of an indicator piece on there, and I thought it was cool. Um, they're huge, but uh, it's not a bad thing, <laughs> so Bugo lights. Obviously I uh, added a little bit to the front here, I cut the bumper, and I added a little bit of a skid tray thing, um, just to hide the fact that there's no chassis under there, so just a little bit different. Door handles, mirrors, the cage inside doesn't really do anything, it's just a piece to connect to the back cage really. Uh, I'm not going to do an interior this time just because time is of the essence. So we got the back cage, we got the uh, spoiler thing, which I'm, yeah, I'm going to leave that darker colored. Um, Toyota on the back, it, it's, I managed to uh, piece it out here so we have black all the way through. Um, this piece I think needs to be changed. It's the Toy Toa instead of Toyota. Uh, yeah, it's a bionicle version. But yeah, I managed to pick some rims that are close-ish to these. It's not close at all, but whatever. And everything else is kind of sorted. I think it's pretty much done. The exhaust, for some reason, isn't working very well. I don't know why, but the exhaust tips are just not, like, coming in. <laughs> it's not meshing with them, even the basic ones. No idea why that is. So I'm just going to put these on there for style points, and uh, yeah, that'll be that. <laughs> Hopefully it links itself up, and it's not really looking like it wants to. So yeah, that's the Toitoa 6x6, at least styling-wise, complete. Definitely not beautiful, but it is a bit of a trial run. Um, unfortunately, the chassis still pokes out considerably, and uh, everything else is as it is. So, I figure we may as well get finished with the rest of the build. Onto the drivetrain. It's going to be four-wheel drive, manual five-speed. I think we can do a lot more than what I have it geared to at the moment, so I'll have to come back to that. Um, complaining about brake fade. Hmm. Let's fix that by making the brakes pretty much as large as they can be. 
and we should have no problem stopping. Unfortunately, you can see the brakes in the back are only in one wheel. Uh, it would be cool to be able to fit an axle under there, but yeah, time is of the essence today. I think you can make a lot more detailed version of this. I'm curious though how it's going to respond in BeamNG. These wheels might just fly off immediately, but I mean it is a long wheelbase V8 truck at the end of the day, so we should be able to get some good performance out of it. Aerodynamics, I've just gone for a, an off-road skid tray. Everything else is pretty much the same. It's got full back seats, although I'm actually going to cut that to half back seats just to save some weight. All this stuff, whatever. And off-road suspension, um, how are we doing? It's 2,191 kilos, 312 horsepower. It's not going to be fast, but it should be decently driving. I'm just going to tune the thing in terms of the graphs here. And let's take it into BMNG. All right, so this is the 6x6 in BMNG, and it's a little bit underwhelming, as you may expect, but uh, creep forward and only some of our wheels turn. But if you're looking at it like this, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Just don't look too closely at those wheels in the middle, and uh, yeah, then it won't matter. As for how this thing drives, um, I don't know why, but this particular body is just incredible in Johnson Valley and I have no problem running it around this course. Uh, so I'm excited. I want to try it out in my uh, testing map that I did for the showcase, just out of curiosity to see if really long wheelbases like this are actually worth it. But designing this kind of had me realize that it's been a long time since I actually like paid attention to the things that I create and make them decent. <laughs> um, maybe next week instead of doing something that's all over the place and just like the worst of or the best of or something like that, I might just try to make something that looks good because this is very borderline. I think it looks okay and I'm curious to hear what your opinions are but I definitely think I can do better. Because reminiscing about the showcase a little bit, um, it's just like, man, there were some really good looking vehicles in that showcase and I uh, am jealous of your abilities to make cool stuff, those of you in the community, and I want to join you. <laughs> so, yeah, as much as I've made a 6x6, I feel like I need to go back to the basics sometimes, so let's do that next week. But talking specifically about this car, or this truck I should say, um, I'm having a lot of fun with it just running on this dirt course. Uh, it's definitely completely unremarkable, but even with a 300 horsepower V8, like, I didn't even tune it properly. I literally hit AI tune and I was like, yep, that's good enough. Um, it drives fine. And this is also just an off-road preset in suspension. Maybe this can be an example, for those of you who are new to automation, of what you can do with really just putting decent components on it and then hitting the AI stuff and letting the game do all the tuning and the hard stuff for you. This was really an exercise of putting fixtures on the car more than anything. The base vehicle itself is fully functional. At least for this sort of driving, it's definitely not a track car and the suspension is very soft. But that's what I wanted, so that's what I got. You know, there's probably a way to make a legit 6x6 by editing the files in JBeam. Uh, I do not have the technical knowledge to be able to do something like that. <laughs> Programming and uh, reading through code and understanding it is definitely not my specialty. That's not what kind of engineer I am, so... Yeah, <laughs> somebody probably knows how to do it, and if you do, let me know. I'm trying to get back to the road right now in Johnson Valley. By the way, did I mention I'm in Johnson Valley? That's one of the base maps in BMNG. There we go. Okay, let's do an actual like road test and see how it handles once we get up to fifth gear. But even in crashing so far and bouncing around, I haven't lost any fixtures, so I'm gonna I'm gonna consider that to be a win. Top speed is claimed to be 237, I believe, something like that, uh, by the time I was finished with the tuning, and it seems fairly realistic that it could actually hit that. Uh, definitely no problems there. It says ESC, but it doesn't actually have any ABS or anything like that. It is straight up just four-wheel drive with auto-locking diffs and nothing else. <laughs> That's how it goes. So this highway is quite lengthy. We are running off-road tires. Uh, it's not the most ideal speed setup, but 243? Not bad, actually. Not bad at all. And I'm going to cap out the gears at 260-something. Let's put it in two-wheel drive. Le lessen the uh, drivetrain drag a little bit, yeah. 260 is approximately maximum speed. So, just going to run around in two-wheel drive now, see how it behaves. Um, 
question for you as the general audience of these videos. I like asking you questions because then I get good answers. Uh, okay, I have to sift through a lot of bad answers before I get to the decent ones, but um, somebody commented a while ago. I do read every comment that people make, by the way, so if you say something, I've probably seen it. Um, somebody commented that they wanted to see more proper testing of vehicles, and I'm curious to know what you guys think about maybe trying something a little bit different this year. I remember a long time ago I used to do a racing series with every single one of the vehicles that I made in Automation and Beam for the channel and I was kind of just competing against myself to get a good time on a track and at the end of every video I would run every car, like each car that I made that specific video on the track and then post a time overall. So essentially what we had at the end of the day, oh, did I stall it? Oh no, we're good. Uh, but at the end of the day, I had a list of the fastest cars, I guess, that I've made that year. I'm curious to know if you guys want to have a test track, basically. Just think of it like Top Gear's test track, um, except for the channel. The thing is that it really doesn't benefit vehicles like this, where it's completely off-road oriented and I'm reaching the ends of the maps with it quite easily. <laughs> that fence is the end of the Johnson Valley map. Something like this would be slow as heck in an actual circuit, but decently quick in a place like, well, Johnson Valley, or off-road things, Endurodrome, something like that. This is actually a pretty legit Baja truck, by the way. <laughs> Not bad at all, I'm having a lot of fun here. But yeah, curious to see what your thoughts are, maybe we can do an off-road and an on-road version. And uh, I'll just have to keep people's posted times, or keep the times posted for people. It, it's saying things in reverse is always fun. But yeah, more uh, more stuff to come, for sure. No doubt about that, I've got a lot of ideas, a lot of videos in my mind that I'm thinking about. And for those of you curious, let's run this thing on the track that I ran the showcase cars on, just to see how fast it'll actually go on there. And uh, yeah, it's in Johnson Valley, so BRB. Ah yes, the Baja Showcase 2023, the fastest time was 154. And uh, the second fastest time was actually a large bus, I believe, that got 157, so I better be able to do better than that, my goodness. Oh no, I'm getting PTSD. I spent like 14 hours on this track over the course of seven streams, something like that, for the showcase. It was a bit, <laughs> it was a bit much. Uh, but this should actually be a decent runner because good power, decent torque curve, and... Um, yeah, long wheelbase, off-road tires. I feel like I could do a lot with this in this showcase, and I kind of just want to show what you can do with 300 horsepower, because I know some people were rocking 3,000 and their times still were not good. It really is completely about gearing and suspension when you're off-road. So the course goes a little bit wild here, if you're unfamiliar, basically. Uh, it's extremely bumpy, it's 99.99% sand, and the dunes at the beginning are basically the thickest snow-type sand that you can go through. This is probably... oh, Turns out all that practice actually means something. But yeah, long wheelbases do really well on this sort of track, and the uh, short wheelbase stuff definitely does not. <laughs> Big wheels, soft suspension. That's exactly what you want for a course like this. I've been thinking about some next showcases coming up. I have a lot of ideas, as always. I think I'm probably going to participate in a few smaller challenges or host some of my own first, just because time is very much of the essence these days. And yeah, I have to get ready for my um, daughter, <laughs> who's coming soon. Um, so yeah, the things are things are a little bit wild these days. Okay, I made it through that first section with really no trouble at all. This next back bit is, okay, third gear. <laughs> uh, very, very bouncy, and it takes a lot of the shorter cars off uh, the wrong way. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so there are some flatter sections. You can definitely skirt the track and just kind of run around the outside. I'd had to do that for a couple entries during the actual showcase. Oh! Send it! Oh, it lived. Okay, we're good. I'm, I'm continuing to send. I believe I damaged the front wheels, but we're so close to the finish. 
that I'm just going to continue anyways. And because the run is going a little scruffy with that, uh, I'm going to use the age-old uh, cut the massive jumps at the end for a time of, and this is going to be quite a respectable time actually, 2.25. Hmm. In something that was not made to go fast at all, 2.25 is very good for that track. Consider the fact that the suspension is thoroughly tweaked. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support on things. Thank you to everybody who is continuing to be here and is just joined as well. We're going to hit 100k by the end of the year, boys. I can feel it. <laughs> nah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm uh, not super confident in myself in that way. But you know what? Who knows? I definitely don't. YouTube is an unpredictable beast, but it is a fun one, and this is my hobby and part-time job. Hopefully you like what I make, and if you do, then subscribe and like this video and comment and stuff, and yeah, I mean, I got a lot more ideas coming up, but if you have some, then shoot them down in the comments, I'll take a look and <laughs> see what you have to offer. Oh man, yeah, cool stuff coming up though, I'll see you guys again next time. Maybe, just maybe, we'll make something a little bit more track-oriented or just cruising the streets at night. <laughs> oh, this is unfamiliar territory for this thing. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> See you again next time. Just want to give a quick shout out to those who have chosen to support this channel via the join button, uh, specifically the VA tier, which is $5 a month. And yeah, basically, this is the way to support me. This is my Patreon. Uh, without having a Patreon, uh, this is the most consistent support that I get on YouTube, and I appreciate everybody who is a part of it. Uh, if you want to become a part of it, then hit the join button down below. We have Overlord, QT Bear, QT, Terry01, J Pope, Javis, Davis Heister, the German dude, Sinlab, Trevor Cousin, Goofy Plays, Phoenix Shark, Nat64, Mancini Country, Badger, Shadow Jasper, and Baja Blast. Thank you, everyone. I'll see you again very very soon. I literally post every week, so uh, yeah, next Saturday. <laughs> if not before that, with something else. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah.